Hello everyone, welcome to Downtown Tailoring. I'm not sure if I properly have introduced myself. My name is Aida Flores, I'm fashion designer. You may know me as your friendly YouTuber, sewing and alterationist, but believe it or not, I'm not really talented at sewing. There is quite a journey as to how I got here. When I was a child, I always see people and clothes and I was so interested in clothes and the way the clothes falls. And one day, one day, I was 16, I think, I arrived to my home and I found on my bed a sewing machine and all the products that you need to start a sewing career. My mom told me, you know what? I signed you off for a technical degree in fashion design. And I'm like, uh, oh, I'm so excited. But you know, I was young, right? So I was like, a, hmm, she's crazy. Why she wants to control me? Like, but I really like it. So it was like, a, okay. Like, a, I was like, a, okay. So I started my classes. I was really good at fashion, drawing, history, art, everything, but -na 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 -na, sewing. <laughs> and you know, what I really like always was fashion, like a fashion design. I like to create shapes and new designs. And people always will tell, oh, she just choosing fashion because she doesn't want to do a tough career. You know, when you are part of a family that everybody puts a lot of weight in going to the university and be super professional and have master's degree and PhD and all those things, you know? So I wanted to, to demonstrate that I can go to the university and do a tough career. So I graduated from engineer. What, like it's hard? I did as well a post degree in administration of constructions. Now that I prove my family that I'm not lazy, well, do I am. I can pursue my true passion, fashion design. But still, you know, at that point, I'm very good at drawing, <laughs> sketching, designing. I was good at pattern making, but my sewing still needed a little bit of practice, let's say. <laughs> But little by little, I started sewing a little bit. And I consider myself that I've never was like a good, 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 good at sewing. Because anyway, I had my fashion business and I mostly did the patterns and cut the fabric and deal with the customer. And I probably never sewed. I knew how you wanted to sew the dresses and the designs because otherwise, if you don't know, you cannot cut them. But, you know, and one day the University of Santo Domingo decided to open the fashion school. And I was lucky enough to be selected as the professor. It's a kind of a competitive process where everybody have to submit their credential and then there is a jury and then you have to defend if you are good enough. And, well, I had the privilege to be hired as a professor and I was really young at that time. I was professor for about 13 years and during all my years, I saw so many students grow, to really grow. Between that time that I was professor, I got married, got two children, one boy, one girl. The girl one is the one that helped me with the videos. She's the one that does everything really for the channel. I'm just a face. I as well got a master on education. It's like an education for adults and, and post-secondary education in general. Things were really nice in the Dominican Republic. It was a beautiful life, a beautiful family. We used to go to the beach all the time and you know, always we had a good time. But one day, I don't know what happened to me. I decided to move to Canada. I don't know, I really have in my mind that idea, like I wanted my kids to grow up in a more multicultural environment. I used to speak a uh, good French at the time, bonjour tout le monde. 
I took the real difficult decision to leave behind my life and move to Canada. And that was really a big decision and a tough decision. It was very hard for me to leave my family behind. And you cannot understand how hard it was for me to leave my students behind. Some of them postponed their graduation. They were waiting for me. My colleagues tell them, she's not coming back. She's not coming back. I feel like uh, they felt betrayed, some of them. You know, they keep writing to me, asking me questions all the time. To be a teacher was so important and fulfilling in my life. That was really hard. And this is why I have so much passion for teaching. I know, you know that. You know, a lot of my students today are professionals and they are doing very well. And some of my students are as well teaching. And I asked him when I went, oh, can I go to your school, please? Because I don't know this one. This one is a new school. There was a study that was being done and they decided to choose a place that really vulnerable people live. So they decided like a commission with the government decided to create school in that place so the people doesn't need to transport to the center of the city because the center of the city is super congested, super crowded, and they install a super school there. I don't remember how many things they have, but that's a lot. And I went and checked all the installation and all my students, and I had a great time with them. They showed me all the facilities they have, the workshop with the students. And uh, you know, when I saw the students sitting in the classroom, and I was like, uh, they are my grandchildren. Because my students are like my children, and then their students, my grandchildren, right? And uh, well, you know, I have to say that not everybody believed that I was their teacher, but uh, <laughs> I started very young. Then I decided to go to my own school. <laughs> and I was so amazed because the school pretty much looked the same. I took those shoots for you so you know from where I come from. When I didn't know how to sew at all, but they teach me to sew. When I finished the fashion school, I knew how to sew. And even the director today is the little girl that was the grandchild of the founder. Her name was called Mercy Hackes. And there are so many good fashion designers in the Dominican Republic, thanks to her. So I came here to Canada with nobody. We were lucky because uh, we arrived and my husband had a job like a, the first week. That was good, but that gave me a challenge because at that time I couldn't even speak English. It's not that I speak today, but at least, <laughs> at least I can, you know, make myself understand. And without speaking the language, I have to go and register my children in the school, you know, find a school for them, find an apartment to live, try to find a job for myself. That was the biggest problem. I don't know, anybody in Canada knows that, that there is a, what they call the Canadian experience. And, uh, you know, if you don't have Canadian experience, it doesn't matter how good you are, you won't really get a job. So, you know, I was turned down in so many, so many places. Like, um, I remember going to a popular chain that those alterations and they never called me back. In this case, I think I was lucky because I went to another alteration shop. As soon as she saw me, she said, oh, you will be my next manager. I know that. You know, I was lucky enough to get that job. And this is when I started with the alterations because I did alterations in my country, but mm, not really too many. I did more like a fashion design. I did custom made. And that was where my journey in alteration started. When you know how to pattern, you know exactly what is the alteration you need, like a pattern maker are the best at pinning. Then one day my husband told me, you know what, we shouldn't be like that. We should have a business. 
and uh, we decided to open our own business. Uh, we decided better just to buy a business. And we really try a lot of different business <laughs> before going into alterations. We almost start with a dollar store. We almost did a popular fast food chain. We then decided, oh, maybe we can go to the dry clean alteration because we can both combine our technical abilities. Finally, we found these two business, this one and the other one where I used to do the alterations at the beginning. And we bought both business at the same time. I was to stay in one, the one that I used to call downtown cobbler because we used to do shoes as well and he stay here in the one that i'm here now so with the pandemic we say hmm better to be in just one place so we pay just one rent and we decided to be in the same place both together and now we are happily working together husband and wife and he doesn't hate me yet and i don't hate him neither <laughs> And I know that it sounds really good like uh, to have, oh, you have your alteration business and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and I'm very happy about that, but that doesn't come without, you know, when I bought the other business, you know, it was very successful to be honest when I bought it, but the style of the previous owner was the opposite to my style. Like uh, she, was, she was a kind, nice person that will do alterations for very, very, very cheap. The prices were really low. And to be honest, everybody was very happy, but the alteration didn't possess the quality because of course, if you charge less, you are going to spend less time doing an alteration. In my case, I'm the opposite. I'm a little bit on the perfectionist side. I'm not perfectionist. I wouldn't say that, but I like to do things well. Like if you wanna do a good job, that takes time. And if it takes time, you have to charge. And then so many places around here, I'm talking about 12 years ago, I think, so many places around here that they really charge low. So, you know, low price were the standard and people love the good job, but they would prefer that good job with the lower price. And sometimes that really doesn't connect. In fact, I have to adapt at the beginning and do some sort of kind of in between jobs in order to be able to keep the business going. You know, anyways, people are smart. When they saw that the quality of the job was better, they were willing to pay a little bit more. But still, you know, you, you, you cannot imagine how many, oh my gosh, are you, are you charging $12 for a ham with a cough? Oh my God. You know, really, that really happened. It took me years bringing the prices to the really right point until now. I think my prices still are like a just, just enough. But I think I have found some kind of balance. But I could tell you that after a few years of working and trying my best, I really can say that I grew up my reputation. Some people leave the country and then when they come on vacation, they come here and do their alterations. And then <laughs> next year they might come again. Very happy with my business. It was like just before the pandemic, probably seven or eight months before that. And one day my daughter tell me, mom, let's do a YouTube channel. And you know how I am. I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> you know, I can change from one thing to the other like, uh, like that. <laughs> but honestly, it's not that I didn't take it seriously. It's just that I didn't take it seriously. Do you understand? You know, I trusted her. She has been doing videos all the time. Each time that we go on vacation and do something, she always did her blog. And I kind of trusted her, but I wasn't into it because uh, I wasn't thinking that I could be teaching again through my videos, you know? So I can, I remember the second, I think the second video we did, it was uh, an alterations of uh, jeans and we did it very fast. Like I wasn't trying to explain how to do it. I was just doing it. 
And because I was so fast at sewing at that time, I was like, and uh, some people say, oh my gosh, you are so fast. I cannot understand, please. Well, anyways, that video blew up. And I remember it was like a 100,000 view and we were like, oh my God. <laughs> And this is where we really thought, oh, maybe, maybe we can really do YouTube. I did TikToks as well, and people really like the way that I explain how to do the mask and those things, and one thing bring the other. And before I knew it, we were really formal with the YouTube channel. But as the time passes and people says, oh, I want to understand this or this or this, we were a little bit more serious in the way we present our videos to not be too fast, not too slow, just in the trying to find that middle point. And my daughter was doing what she liked, which is uh, editing video and directing me. She's my boss. It was so fantastic for me because I as well refound my true passion, which is teaching. And I'm so grateful for you too because it have allowed me to connect again with the people, with the community, and it allows me to teach again. Although I have to recognize that sometimes it might be, let's say, a little frustrating because you know how YouTube is like, a, you have Mr. Algorithm and you have to work for it. And sometimes you will want to do the videos a little bit more comprehensive or better, or but the algorithm one that you do your videos the same size all the time with a fast pace that sometimes is not so conducive for sewing. And uh, you know, even when the video is too good, Mr. Algorithm punish it because it makes people leave the platform because it's what they were looking for. Although I'm so happy with YouTube, sometimes I get a little bit frustrated because it's not the way that I wish to teach. And that sometimes the algorithm doesn't want to pay a video if it's not over eight minutes. And uh, as you know, when I do a video, I have to pay to my colleagues so I can be doing the video instead of doing, you know, my alterations and all my job. And uh, sometimes it can be a little bit, it can be a little bit suffocating. For example, I've always wanted to teach pattern making because uh, pattern making is really my true expertise. This is what I really visualize, I understand. But I told my daughter, okay, let's just teach pattern making, can we? In order for me to teach pattern making and do really good, we have to put 10 videos side by side. And she's like, oh, <laughs> you wanna kill the channel. Okay, yeah, I know. Because that's not good for Mr. Algorithm. This leads me to my next phase in life, which is the e-learning. I just launched my first e-course on patterning and I'm so excited because now I think that I'm complete. Like I'm doing everything I like, YouTube, e-learning, sewing, teaching, everything that I like. And I feel like the e-school is what will give me the freedom to make more videos without the stress. Oh, will the algorithm like this or not? So you will have more videos to come. I'm going to put a link of the school so you can take a look of the school and tell me what do you think about it? So, as you know, my journey in sewing has been quite a journey. My mom knew my taste. She just put me in fashion school. I did learn how to sew at the end, but I did learn. And I was professor. I came to Canada, did my business, started YouTube. And now, as I said before, completed my circle with my e-school. Okay, this was a good conversation that I have with you. Thank you all for listening. I wish as well to know what your journey is, how you start sewing. Let's get to know each other. In fact, I know a lot of you, you know that, but you are so many, so I want, you know, everybody be like communicating with each other. So guys, that was all for today. If you like this video, please give us a like, algorithm like that and don't forget to subscribe share comment bye 
Special thanks to Carlos Núñez for opening the doors for me, for the schools, and surprising me with my pattern maker teacher. Hello, Doña Leida.